mkishikane pamoja mimi na kina mimi na hakika tutafika sasa nitatangaza hivi karibuni tu mimi nikiona kama nyinyi mnakubali nitaangalia sasa mnakubali nataka niendelee aendelea siendelee aendelea siendelee hii ni kama ile mto Nile imetoka jinja inaelekea Mediterranean hakuna chochote naweza kuizuia tutafika 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 Raila Odinga the party leader of ODM they are talking about he will announce soon Hamana Manyora, are we at that point now we can fairly say that uh, one of the other candidates at the presidential election is Raila Odinga? And what is this he's been doing, crisscrossing the country and um, raising the temple? Of course, Raila Odinga has been denying it until recently. Now he has come out in the open. But the BBI and the handshake was all about making Raila president. Mm -hmm. and this is not Peter about the bush. Uh, because the good things in BBI, and there are many good things in BBI, especially <laughs> to curb electoral fraud and violence, uh, were not going to be implemented by anybody else after 2022 unless it was a handshake, a handshake partner, a major player in that uh, uh, handshake deal. And that was going to be Raila. Another thing it was addressing was the betrayal. People want to run away from this thing. The betrayal that our community feels has been persecuted and betrayed. Part of the cause of this problem, you know, this country has two problems. One side feeling betrayed and persecuted, the other side, side having another side having a sense of entitlement. This is the conflict in this. I think the handshake was meant to solve that. So Raila was always going to be. He denied it because of BBI. Now that the BBI has been shelved, you see he looks presidential. Mm. Mm. If you watched him uh, talk in Nakuru during the launch of the Azimio La Umoja, that mm. was a president. Then they followed up when he was in, I think, Homer Bay a week or so later. And you see him moving around and with security and very presidential and meeting diplomats recently, about two weeks ago, and then with a visiting Estonian president. Uh, I, I advise our ladies to see how a serious person can dress. You know, you don't need to be naked to look oh. at <laughs> So, you see... What do you mean? All these things are, all these are, that is, by the way, come on, Sam. All these things are, all these things are. What does that mean? president was majestically yeah. dressed. Yeah. All these things are, are a clear indication. But even in Kakameka, you have seen him speak. He says he's ready. And whenever he's launching a program on youth, uh, on a public service, he's a man saying, and, he's, and he even said that uh, I would resign if I didn't do what I'm promising to do. Mm -hmm. So what else are we waiting for? Raila is a presidential candidate in 2022, joining Salia, Kalonzo, um, and Ruto. I hear Gideon is on the way. So mm. he's a candidate. OK. Uh, and we'll shortly be listening to Deputy President William Ruto. Do you have the voice that uh, he's talking about um, the agenda of uh, his political party moving into 2022? Listen the conversation to be about the economy of our nation. We must equally agree that it is going to start with those who don't have jobs at the bottom of the pyramid. That first, we must agree on how the jobless will be our first priority. Number two, we must also agree on how the hustlers who are doing small businesses, how their enterprises can be empowered so that we can grow their enterprises and ensure that they too become part and parcel of the economy of our nation. Right, and Speaker Kagushia, of course, these are just some of the uh, uh, presidential contenders that have declared. You have uh, Speaker Justin Muturi, uh, we have uh, Ruben Kigame, um, we have uh, Mukhisa Kitui, we have uh, one governor of Makweni, Kivuta Kibwana, and the list is endless and it's growing each and every day. So when you reflect on the conversations going on, um, let me just say in the theater of politics, are you convinced uh, that the political class has gotten the tempo and the aspirations of the people? Well, 
one of the things I must say is uh, I, I like I, I liked a comment that was made by one of your panelists uh, recently, I think in one of the evening shows, mm -hmm. who said that uh, we have had the same dancers uh, since 1992 and they have refused to leave the stage. And we have uh, the same, same political faces that we have always had. What we have seen in other countries is that if you try you are first time in uh, presidential campaigns, you don't get it, more often than not, you leave the stage and allow others now to come and give what they have to give. In Kenya, you have the same, same faces. And, and sometimes it uh, behoves us now to think what will happen in the next 10 years when, or in the next 15 years, maybe when we don't have these same faces, who then takes over. But, but at this point in time, our choice of uh, political uh, leaders is uh, limited to the same faces that you have always known, most of them who come from well-to-do families and well-known families uh, who are also politicians before, uh, their fathers and their mothers. So really, we are so limited as a country and uh, we kind of have to choose from the same, same group of people. And we hope maybe with time, uh, our processes and, uh, and the way we process things can change so that we can have uh, different uh, uh, you know, faces and um, and uh, talents come come on board. But they, as we talk now, the politicians have really picked up. Uh, I dare say. But remember, I have also said in this show again that our main uh, candidates come 2022 will be Raila Odinga and William Ruto. We will have these others because, uh, like uh, what Prof has said, that mm -hmm. uh, BBI was about to make pre uh, Raila the president. Now the BBI did not work, and so it has left a, a wake of confusion. Uh, amongst the, the, the handshake and uh, the Oka group. Uh, and so for that reason, uh, we, we have now Raila, who is now trying to come yeah, out a little bit more boldly and a bit more angry. openly, now declaring his candidature in, in 2022. So he will be a candidate, and he has picked tempo, I dare say. He's, he's doing well in terms of crisscrossing the country and uh, reselling his candidature again, even after it had been shelved in people's minds. Of course, Mudavadi is also trying his best. Uh, we have... Uh, uh, we have Ruto, who has uh, uh, become revolutionary all of a sudden. He's, he has revolutionized the way people think he has changed the, the conversation. Uh, people now talk about uh, the bottom-up and the hustler movement much more than they are talking about any other political ideology in the country. Uh, at some point, we saw the politicians from the handshake trying to um, poop, poop, uh, you know, poke holes onto the bottom-up uh, approach mm -hmm. and the, the hustler movement. I think now they have given up. They are not on it so much at, at the moment. Okay. I think they have now decided to concentrate on their own uh, uh, narratives. But <laughs> yes, we, we, we can see uh, the political uh, lights are now all out uh, okay. in 2022. And, and the politicians have hit the ground. Okay, all right, I hear you, Speaker. Uh, but Honorable Nyonka, because in this country, if you're to, lo to look at uh, the recent elections, they tend to get euphoric uh, three months to the election. I, I, I bet it's because of the final campaign period as declared by IBC, which has already said that uh, the early campaigns uh, should not be happening because the official season is yet to begin. But talking of waves, what is, what is the feeling in your county, Kisi County, and the region? when it comes to the aspirations what they want to see from the political leaders and the solutions they are seeking, and is there a wave already? Uh, Sam, I think that's a good question. Number one, I, I would like to mention that if, if you keenly listen to what's happening on the ground, you notice a lot of these coalitions are actually coming up. Mm -hmm. And there was one which was done by the team from Northeastern where... Um, uh, a Kuri Atani was the chairman. Uh, then you have uh, the other one which came, you had the team that was speaking from Muranga. Mm -hmm. I think the one which Raila attended, which I found to be very interesting in, in the comments which were being given about Raila having been demonized by the people of Central for a long time. Um, in Kisi right now, the feeling that uh, exists is that uh, Matiangi should now uh, up his game and also get himself, get a space on the table so that he can negotiate for the community. The, the, the fact is, yes, um, Raila is our leader from Nyanza, uh, but there is this general feeling that, yes, even when ODM is a party that is quite popular in Nyanza and areas of Kisi, 
Um, there are also other parties which have actually ODM has always had about 60% of the vote, 40% has always gone to other, mm -hmm. for example, Jubilee. So there is this feeling that is coming up that uh, it is the coalitions that are going to, to make um, any groups uh, that want power, that wants to be in government to negotiate. The, in fact, the, the what is some what is happening to me in, in politically because mm -hmm. I've been practicing politics for, for quite a while, is that uh, Kenyans are not just open and honest enough to say that maybe we need something like a coalition government. That the the, the way we are managing our politics, um, I, I saw speaker talk about uh, DP and how he has revolutionised everything. What the speaker forgot to say is how. Uh, C.S. Matiangi last week uh, mm -hmm. basically blew up the balloon uh, of the DP. Uh, the narrative that he has presented out there of being a person who's a hustler struggling to make it from his lowly life and everything and for people to find that he's actually a wealthy man who for all intents and purposes happens right. to be uh, where he is because of the largesse of state and he has those things. Uh, the other thing that uh, I, I, I listen very carefully what Speaker is talking about, about this dynasty. Speaker, I am very proud of my, by my dynastic uh, heritage. Why? I didn't get nominated uh, or selected to become an MP after my father died. My father worked tirelessly for 27 years in this country as a minister. Perform, performed quite well. I've also come up, I've been elected uh, not less than three times. Mm -hmm. So this narrative that these are dynasties who have refused to leave office and they are the same clique and same type. No, you have new people. Kivuta, okay. Kivuta is an incredible man. Uh, you have new people coming in. For me, I highly respect Mukisa Kitui. I don't think there's any problem. I mean, the fact that Musalia has not been elected as president he has been grinding the mill. Um, my party leader, Moses Wetangula. I mean, th there, is, there is nothing that makes these people okay. so inept that they can't be president of Kenya. If you look at all of them, they are well-educated. If you look at most of them, they are exposed. They have served in government as cabinet ministers, uh, very serious ministries. They have stunningly performed. So for anybody to come up and say, that, oh, you know, this is a new thing, there's nothing new that uh, Raila is going to present as far as I'm concerned. There's nothing new that William Ruto is going to present. What is most important right now about the Kenyan politics, do we have continuity with a steady hand and somebody who's predictable, okay. or are you going to create an environment, the one which the DP has created, where he's saying is creating something new, which when you ask the details, you don't have. Okay. Well, all right. I hear you. Advocate Ogola, and I'll use your uh, presence on the panel to represent the citizen, yes. but also the professionals. Mm -hmm. And when you listen to what he's saying, I mean, it's that season again. Every five years, you have to have an election. Are we just doing an election because it's time, or are we trying to cure certain challenges through a transition? Is it even possible? I think I agree with Professor Onyora's initial sentiment that uh, the BBI project was a political project to make Raila Odinga the president, and therein lies the problem. The problem is not in Raila Odinga's presidency or candidature. The problem is our politics is shaped around interest formation. So that if interests coalesce or converge at a particular point, then it does not matter that you come from different ideological or political positions. And that interferes with the, with, with the maturation of our democracy. I want you to understand something. If you step out mm -hmm. from the theater of play and you have a global view or a bird's eye view of what is happening in the politics in Kenya, you will discover a very disturbing pattern that undermines our democratic processes. We did not anticipate, and the Constitution does not anticipate, this kind of political cross-pollination. I would have even said prostitution, but <laughs> <laughs> because look at look at our politics comparatively. Mm -hmm. What is happening in the U.S. step in the U.K. You don't have a political party abandoning their own. The way the man in which Uru has done to William Ruto, mm -hmm. and then 
shifting alliances and building a new formation by another political party, such as the ODM. Just the, the fact that Raila's support, uh, Uhuru's support is benefiting Raila, should not mute serious concerns about the governance of our politics. So there's a problem there. I think if we stuck to what the Constitution has prescribed, we would still arrive at the same conclusion, but in an orderly manner, through a, pre a predictable pathway. Look at what the Constitution has provided. We have a framework, a legal framework, for pre-election and post-election coalitions, right. without having to merge parties haphazardly. At the presidential election, if nobody achieves the 50% plus one vote, you will go into a fresh election. Mm -hmm. There's a presumption there that number two and number three, who may come from different political party formations, may then enter into a coalition agreement, right? If Raila and Ruto are on the ballot, and Raila is going with a the, with the running mate from ODM, and Ruto is going with a running mate from Jubilee, and Uru Kenyatta has withdrawn his support for William Ruto, nobody would get 50% plus one. Then after that, you can negotiate a package. If we support you in the fresh election so that you can get 50% plus one, or maybe you, you, you know, at that point, just whoever crosses the line, then we may have this. You get, after the election, the law still permits a structured relationship, more or less in the format of Jubilee and Kanu, mm -hmm. after the election. But what we have right now is that politics of betrayal is succeeding itself as it were before 2010. The Constitution anticipated or at least envisioned a shift in our political culture. That with this new framework, those who want to build alliances will do it within a legal framework that is predictable, that is identifiable, right. that is acceptable. Do we have a predictable, acceptable, identifiable format for building coalition? No. The overriding scheme is that interest formation. And there will be a terrible spillover in the election because the way our leaders perceive election results or our electoral processes, if you compare what the courts say that election is a process every step of the way must count, politicians don't care about that. Election is about results to the politician get the results first, okay. then work on the process. <laughs> in terms of coalition, uh -huh. get the winning package first, then fit it in the law. And, and therefore and the question... That's where the problem lies, Sam. Sorry, l let me spread the conversation, we'll get back to that. Yes. But mm. therefore the question, Herman, um, is there anything for Mwananchi? It's just them to sit back and watch as the politicians get at each other. Oh, that's a good question. There's nothing for Mwananchi, nothing for Anjiko, absolutely nothing. <laughs> the kind of... Uh, uh, the modern state as currently constituted, whether it's in America, in Europe, or in Africa, is not about people. It is about those who want to control the state power and state resources for themselves. And they, they are a club, they are members of a club. That's why when you are an outsider like William Ruto, you, they don't quite want to admit you because you are an outsider. It is a club. You know, but not for anybody below that. Uh, that's why, Sam, you will be aware, as indeed viewers are aware, that any time a system or a government has worked in the interest of people, it has always been like a revolution. So a guy sees, he takes power because he has an idea, a vision to change society, and then he takes power. Unfortunately, not always through democrat democratic means. Then you see, if you look at countries that have transformed the lives of people mm -hmm. radically, mm -hmm. they have been revolutionary governments. But the government as we know it today, whether it is Ruto, Raila, whoever it is, they don't have us in mind at all. Because, and I'm soon going to do, mm. I'm, I'm releasing something very soon, mm. asking 10 tough questions to Raila and, and Ruto, because these are the top men. And that's why we don't have political parties. Because if you are going to have political parties, there will be parties with a stand on something. What is Raila's stand on, on, on employment, mm. o, on, on wages? What is the minimum wage? They were asked this question in the debate of 2013. They, were, they, were, they could not answer it. Mm. You see, what is their stand, for example, on cheap imports in this country, on dumping in this country? What is their, we talk about food security. What is Ruto's stand, for example, on the distribution of land? 
You see what's happening in Laikipia? Before you talk on matters, so, so there will be parties who will have, for example, a stand on land. Okay. You see, so when we get to that point, then we will have political parties. For now, what we have are like Kirai Murungi. I like him because he's a very honest man. He said, these are just vehicles. And he created his bus. So, 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 for, so for that reason, these politicians, to answer your question, is not about us. Okay. Yes. Let's listen to something that is mm. happening in Mount Kenya region. Governor Noiguru was on the show last week, and she spoke about the situation in Mount Kenya that uh, it would be very difficult for her to defend her seat on a jubilee ticket. And then the following day she was at the ESCC recording a statement and she said this. Uh, uh, 11 months away. We have political deadlines and those political deadlines require that by certain times you should have announced your seat, by certain times you should have announced your party. And so in good time, in good time, we are consulting very widely and listening to the people of Kirinyaga and listening to the people of Mount Kenya na tutaenda mwelekeo ya ile watu wa Mount Kenya watatue ambia. We are quoting Anwar Guru as ANC. I'm here as the deputy party leader. We don't want this governor to be intimidated by anybody. We know it's because of politics. We know in central it's so difficult to sell a certain political uh, party and a certain individual who is contesting for presidency. As ANC, we are going to stand in solidarity with her and we are quoting her to be one of our king pin in central Kenya. Is she joining your party? We are quoting her. That's why we are here. <laughs> you have to quote a girl. Pole, 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 pole. That's why you are standing in solidarity with her as ANC. Well, okay. She was there mm -hmm. and Savula said that. Then something happened in Kirinyaga of, uh, I think it was over the weekend, PS Kibicho was on the ground and it was quite heated. Listen. Sema, yule mtu ataki kuunganisha Kirinyaga, yule mtu anataka kuleta vugu-vugu, mutadil na yeye mukiwa wanaichi. Sinikweli, hiko watu enu hapa, miaka inaenda kuisa tano, hajawai ingia ofisi ya masharia kuuliza barabara. Lakini ikijembo wako hapo, niyao. Tunasema kirenyaga kwanza. Wazazi, kirenyaga? Tuache siyasa ya pesa nane. Tujue, uhuru ndi yako na kifunguo. Na wakati hile imebaki, ni vizuri sisi wenyewe tukue tunatembea hiyo ofisi ya watu wake, ndiyo kirenyaga ifaidike. Kirenyaga ipate maji, kirenyaga ipate barabara, kirenyaga ipate stadium, kirenyaga ipate estima. Right, and Speaker Kagushia, the two people speaking there, one Purity Ngirichi, the woman representative for Kirinyaga County, quite an, an, an opponent and a critic of uh, Governor Anwar Iguru, and then P.S. Kibicho there. She, he doesn't uh, clearly say who he's talking about, so I'll take it as it is. But when you reflect on the politics of the mountain and with the, what I would call revelations of Anwar Iguru, that um, the ground was not for BBI, that the ground is not with the Jubilee Party, that defending her seat on such a ticket would mean sure defeat. Is this the reality? And then as political leaders in that area strategize, where do you lead the Monanchi this time round? Well, th th that makes me have a feeling of the Wazungus who said that they have discovered Mount Kenya. What is Waiguru revealing? What, what are these revelations? She can't talk of a revelation today that she has now realized that uh, Jubilee is not going to take her anywhere. I mean, that is a reality that has been there. Uh, if she is getting the revelation, then she is getting the revelation rather late in the day. Jubilee died. It is not there. It can't be revived. And unfortunately, uh, Waiguru herself has also lost uh, ground so much because of uh, clinging on uh, a dead horse for so long. And I'm not very sure that... Uh, even by shifting now, she's likely to resuscitate herself. Nevertheless, what you saw uh, uh, Engineer Karaja Kibisha do, uh, you know, having a now a handshake with Ngirishis, is basically to ensure that uh, he blocks the entry of uh, Waiguru into the, uh, into the Uda party and, not to, and, and, and also into the Hasla movement. Uh, and, and really that was localized uh, politics by, by those individuals. And uh, that, that's Kirinyaga politics. And in, interestingly, I'm, I'm surprised that Governor, uh, Governor Iguru have now to contend with the issue of VACC. Ordinarily, you don't see that happening a lot with the Kirinyaga politicians. 
uh, you know of course uh, uh, the PS has 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 been accused of having a push and pull with politicians from Mount Kenya region, trying to manage them so that they stay on a certain course, which really has not been working so well. But that has, doesn't happen with the Kirinyaga politicians. Normally, you don't see it happening there. There, they kind of seem to have some level of uh, modesty, respect to each other, and of course, uh, the, the, the PS being at the helm of uh, uh, the, the the pulling and the pushing bit, he doesn't do it to them. So it's surprising that now it's happening to Waiguru, uh, but uh, the, the, the Mount Kenya region has uh, been taken over, politically so speaking. Some, sometimes I hear people saying that Mount Kenya is divided, and I wonder which Mount Kenya are people talking about. I think it's only because they are not on the ground. They don't understand how the ground is speaking. The people who are divided in Mount Kenya are probably just a few political leaders at the top. But if you go to the ground, you will find that Mount Kenya is just as together as it was in 2013 and as it was in 2017. Mount Kenya is intact, it's together, and I agree with the Savula what he says, uh, that there is a certain political candidate who can be sold, and, and really that is Raila Odinga, he can't be sold in Mount Kenya. And even if he gains uh, within the short term, he will uh -huh. still lose eventually, because even the political leaders who are standing with him at this point in Mount Kenya, and you know, let's call a spade a, a, spade, a spade, not a big spoon. The politicians who are standing with him at this point in time in Mount Kenya, uh, you know, will soon desert him because they know they can't sell him. Uh, but of course, I, I hope you have also seen what is happening, like uh, what happened yesterday, uh, Kanini Kega, Sabina, and, and the others accompanying Musalia Mudavad in Moranga. What signals are you getting from this? Uh, you know, basically telling you they are not ready to accompany Raila. When Raila went to Muranga, you know, I, I think uh, we had uh, a few uh, business people, but the politicians are getting kept off. So these are very, very important signals for anyone to, to watch. And, and it's not like uh, the Mudava, the candidate, is also going to sell so much in, in, the, in the region. The region is kind of decided. It, it is together. It is united. Mm -hmm. If you go to my village and poll 10 people, you will hear what nine of them will tell you. They are but, but, all but, but, on but, one but speaker, side. Speaker, because you say that um, the presence of uh, P.S. Kibicho and woman rep Ngirichi there is to lock out Anwe Guru from joining the UDA, I'm yeah. not sure about that because if you have to look at the working relationship between P.S. Kibicho and the DP, what does it tell you? But I'll give you two, two, two reasons why I'm saying this. Number one, actually, the two reasons why Kibicho was there, number one is to ensure that he quotes the Ngerishis, to ensure that he has a, a good uh, public function that is uh, likely to be posted very soon. He so that he doesn't have uh, jeers from uh, the one entry from there. So uh, by going there and having a handshake with the control of the ground so much, then that helps him, first of all, to endear himself and to ensure that the president will have a good event there when he goes, or a good ceremony. Number two, is also he's also using these two politicians, or rather he's using the Grishis as pawns, uh -huh. uh, because uh, w w what has been happening is that um, uh, if you are shifting, or if you are seen to be shifting, then according to the, the system, you must not shift to UDA, you must not promote UDA, you must not promote William Ruto. If you are shifting in Mount Kenya, then shift to any other corner. I mean, and, and what you have seen happening with uh, Mwangi Kunjuri, the Mother Karua, and Moses Kuria. I mean, th th they are pawns, all of them, that uh, let us show this disunity, let us show this uh, disorganization, Pons let us uh, bring this claim that uh, Mount Kenya leaders uh, you know, have different thoughts from speaker, what the people uh, are thinking. Speaker, I'm so asking really, you, you're calling yeah. them pawns for who? Of course, for the state. <laughs> Why would you say that? Sam, because, I mean, Sam, they, can, can they, 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 they have been yeah. with everyone, including S S Speaker, Speaker Muturi. I mean, they are leaders in their own right, aren't they? No, you see, even if you are a leader, let me tell you what happened, Sam. When, when you have been so beaten, you have been so battered by the state, as, um, as uh, these uh, central Kenya politicians have experienced, and uh, at some point you feel so isolated and so lonely. Then at some point uh, you get someone who is giving you a shoulder to lean on. You you very easily get confused to for, right. for, for okay. uh, that, that, that person is sincere. Oh, oh, all right, speaker, I, I hear you. Let's spread the question to Hona Bonyonka here. As you reflect uh, on this, because many have said that whoever is the presidential candidate, they must find a running mate from Mount Kenya if they have to stand any chance of winning. I don't know that, that that's truly factual or it's it's, it's practical. But what are your reflections and thoughts on the scenes you're seeing in Mount Kenya at a time that um, 
the party that drove everyone uh, um, across the region in 2017 is no more, apparently. Um, <laughs> I'm just li listening to the speaker speak, and it's amazing. The, the truth and the reality some about politics, of elective politics, this one we have for members of parliament, I'll give you. Mm -hmm. Uh, about 80%, it's only 20% that will be re-elected. So when Speaker is talking about how he thinks all these uh, leaders from Central, they're leading a, they're looking for a shoulder to lean on, he's accusing Moses Kuria. I find Moses Kuria to be one of the most intelligent politicians I've ever dealt with. To me, he's at the caliber of Jakoyo Midiu. What Moses is saying, and the Speaker is not seeing, it's very simple. Already, the deputy president has nominated his candidate. So where are you going to go when the nomination certificates have been given and you have been on this bandwagon of talking about you are in UDA? <laughs> the truth is, these are the challenges that ODM had from the time when ODM was started. And again, the, 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 Mr. Speaker, um, sometimes you really depress me. <laughs> this notion that uh, Raila will never be voted. I grew up in Kisi in 2002, Sam. Raila would never walk in Kisi. We used to throw stones at him. Right now, Raila is a hero in Kisi. Right now, if Raila is in Kisi and Musalia comes in and Moses Wetangula, who are my members in One Kenya Alliance, Raila will have more people than them. It's a fact. Why? Because Kenyans of good faith have always given Raila his credit where it's due. He has made his mistakes, yes. But Raila, to me, and to a lot of cases are very fair people. We, we always dream about a fair and equitable society. Kenyans, and indeed, <coughs> in this case, people from Kisi, mm -hmm. believe that they are not finished with Raila because he never lost his elections fairly. It is a matter that we are always hoodwinking. The things that Speaker is talking about, oh, Raila is... What, what made Raila not become president? We never discussed that. How many votes did Raila have? What Raila, how many people has Raila worked for from central province? Who uh, put Maura a nominee in ODM? Who brought Rachel Chabez, Chabez, including taking her to school? Who kept Chris Kirubi? What do you mean, taking her to school? Uh, Raila, Raila paid school fees for Rachel Chabez when she was a student. How many members from the Kikuyu community has Raila supported? Jaramogi, his father, worked with, Kibaki, with, 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 with the Jomo Kenyatta. The issues which were at that time, which now Hasla Nation is trying to pick, those are the issues that made Jaramogi get punished, that has made Raila get punished, that made Mboya die. Those are the issues that Raila has been fighting for, for the last 50 years of this country. <laughs> then people dare tell me that Raila cannot walk in Central and people don't love him. They don't have to love Raila. Just know what he has done for this country. <laughs> that nonsense has to stop. That is the demonization that SK Macharia was talking about. Who are the people who have been talking about Raila, saying how he was a demon, how he's a mganga? You know, you know, who? Uh, that is the demonization let, let, that we let, let must stop talking just about in this country. We, let me weigh in and then. It is the that Raila can't go to Central. Let, let me, what is in Central that is so important? All right. Raila has always won the elections minus Central and Rift Valley. Yes, okay. I think, uh, that no, let, let's clarify something. I think, you know, political propaganda is the easiest tool for mobilization. And you have to make fun of it. There's nothing wrong in terms of political mobilization in the campaigning Raila in Mount Kenya or anywhere else. Just like there's nothing wrong with the campaigning route. That, that's the art of politics. Mm -hmm. And Kenyans need to be clever enough to know that politicians will mobilize around an idea that is sellable. Because our politics is not mature. Mm -hmm. If you are the party or the community in power, for if, I, if I use that word uh, liberally, you'll be told, if we lose this thing, if, if, if we lose this thing, we lose everything that we've ever worked for. If you are the, if the community that is seeking power, if I use that word freshly or loosely, you'll be told, if we don't get this thing, we will never make it. Mm -hmm. So I think we should laugh at those. That's political framing because every constituency, political constituency, has an agenda that is easily sellable. 
So I think if looking at the study, and, and Professor Marian Zomo did up an excellent paper on the way the voting patterns in Kenya, defense voting, people vote not because they love someone from Mount Kenya, but they vote for someone from Mount Kenya because at least, even if you will not bring development, you will not take away the things that are already there. Mm -hmm. People in Nyanza will vote for Raila, not because they believe in Raila's transformative agenda, but because at least Raila, even if he doesn't bring, he will have a chance for us to, you know, for, for psychological satisfaction that even our region has produced a president. I think these are the kind of political narratives that Kenyans need to understand and then walk away from them. Okay. There's something you said about Governor Nwaiguru. I think what we need to celebrate is this. Mm -hmm. And like Karanja Kibicha, who is not yet elected and is, a, is an appointed civil servant, Waiguru left the cabinet and on first attempt got elected. And let's, let's not, let's not, what is the obsession with second terms? So I'm telling all governors serving the first term to be happy that they have had an opportunity to have served one term. Even in the US, Trump is a one term president. It's not a must that a governor must serve two terms. It's not a must that an MP must have, must have more than one term. And so on and so forth. So if you want to mobilize, like what I saw in Kirinyaga, it's fine. If the voters want to prefer another candidate, that is why there's a ballot mm -hmm. to renew the mandate. Okay. So, so it's not really, really, it's not a big deal. R right. We need to wind up on this because time is gone. And uh, Haman, so now you reflect on all this, and I want you to be specific on regional issues, like what is happening in Mount Kenya. And one wonders, so what direction? You, we have already, we agreed uh, from this panel that uh, there's nothing for Monanchi. But then how do you do that so that, yes, you go through an election, but you retain what is talking about psychological satisfaction or regions that uh, the political leaders that are leading you represent a bit of your aspirations? I think that more or less answers what the speaker Kagusha was, was saying. You see, I, I, I don't know him, uh, but I suspect he's going to, for a seat. And that's why he's talking <laughs> UDA and hustler. So that that's he, from I yes. suspect. Okay. I have never heard about it. I don't know him. Nobody has ever. But I suspect he must be going for a political seat. Mm -hmm. But you see, he's missing the point, and that's how your question is coming in. Our politics, one, is tribal. It is regional, number two. Number three, we practice our politics through kingpins, what we call Vigogo, regional leaders, for the same reason that, that uh, Wakili here and you are saying mm -hmm. that at, we know some people have a fear, others hope. So we know if so and if so and so is there, then we are there somehow. Mm -hmm. And there in lies the fallacy with the speaker's uh, way of looking at things. He doesn't seem to understand mm -hmm. when the heat is finally generated as we move to next year, August. The people of the mountain will begin to do exactly what you are asking. Where are we as people? What is in this thing for us? And that is always answered by who is there representing us. And that is how Uhuru will come in. It is unlikely the way the speaker would want me to believe that Uhuru will speak to his people in a much the same way we are talking about our future, what we have, consolidating what we have, guarding against losing what we have, and making sure mm -hmm. we remain relevant in this country in the future without a Kikuyu president right. for the time being. Mm -hmm. It is unlikely that the people of Mount Kenya, the Mau Mau people, the most economically powerful people, like I've said, will choose to listen to these young politicians who are in UDA. When that time comes, Speaker, I hope you are listening to me. When that time comes, they will listen to the political leadership of the community and they will listen to President Uhuru Kenyatta. They may not get the votes away from William Ruto in sufficient numbers, really. To, but those votes that they will get, cut us off this narrative we are talking about of our people, our community, our interest, safeguard against, you know, in a Kenya without a Kikuyu president, they will listen to people like Uhuru Kenyatta. And that will chip away 40% of the votes from the mountain. Mm -hmm. And that spells doom for? Okay. For William Ruto. Oh, oh, all right. I, I, oh, I right. Need just, and then finally, just finally, uh -huh. the approach with the, which the speaker seems to be having about the ground 
about the people. Flies in the face of what I'm saying about our politics being kingpin based. And I want to ask the speaker to look critically at how politics is played worldwide and throughout history. The masses are the most unreliable people. I've always given the example, which I can't give because of time, mm -hmm. of that play Shakespeare by any, any uh, Julius Caesar by, by Shakespeare, mm -hmm. where Caesar has been assassinated. And those who have done it talk to the masses, and the masses are happy until Macanton comes and they are begging for the blood of those people. And actually, there was mayhem and problem mm -hmm. in Rome. Mm -hmm. So the idea is okay. play your politics. Let's hope we shall get to a point where a politician can talk to the masses directly. All right. They, they buy his, his, his agenda and all the way up the ballot. All right. But I think we are not yet there. All, all right, Herman. Speaker, uh, speaker, I would want, I just I almost called you Speaker Manora. Yeah. I would want to give you a right of reply, but I don't know how you measure your 20 seconds. Can you try? 20 seconds. No, please. I will. No, basically, just what I would like to say, first of all, really, my comments were not meant to annoy uh, my friend, Honorable Onyonka. Honorable Onyonka, I mean, really, my, my points just uh, are, are just uh, a proper assessment of what there is. Okay. And again, Professor Manyora, I, I think uh, the assumption that they make and that the, 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 the state has generally been making and the political class uh, from Mount Kenya, the senior political class from Mount Kenya that has been making, is that of not relying on the masses and not realizing that the ground is shifting when the ideologies are shifting. The whole issue of the hustler movement and the ideology of the bottom-up approach is one thing that some of the politicians have decided to ignore, have decided to uh, throw mud at, but the truth of the matter is, is a political ideology right. that has been selling and that has been bought by the <clears throat> masses. And, and, and unfortunately, for the first time, People have been given another reason to believe on something else other than okay. the tribe. And, and, and all, really, all right, all right speaker, I hear you. With the, with the masses. All right, let's take a look at the feedback of what people have been saying via Twitter. As Susan TV Kenya, at Timotheki, you say, Theater of Politics. Uh, <laughs> what did I just say? Theater of Politics, it is too hard to sell Raila Odinga in central Kenya. Actually, it is impossible. The modernization of Raila in central Kenya was successfully executed by the same politicians crying foul today. Let's take that bit appeal. We need development. Uh, Engineer Lazaro, a guru is like a soldier who is being faced with a friendly fire from her colleagues. That's why she's trying to get out of the cage and for a space somewhere else. And look for space, rather. Economist Aaron, don't underestimate the commissioners given the mandate by our constitution. Uh, give them time and space. A gray fallacy, one constant, <laughs> your name though, one constant that won't change. The losing party post-2022 poll will be crying foul and begging for IBC's blood. doesn't matter whether they deliver a credible election or not. Uh, Keno Ricci, Bishop Olesapit is wrong. There has been a symbiotic working relationship be between politicians and the church. The church must work with the political class. However, the church should provide guidelines for politicians to abide by whenever allowed. Talking about rules. And Kalu Lepario, for up the upteenth time, politicians have turned churches into a playground for political posturing and razzmatazz. The house of God should be made holy and must be kept as so. Bishop Alessa Pitt has led the way to stop campaigns uh, from the pulpit. That is Kalu on your take this morning. Speaker John Kagusha from Nyeri County, Honorable Richard Onyoka. You didn't give me 20 seconds? I, you have 10. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I would like to say once again some thanks for inviting us to come here. I, I feel that uh, our country will become a better country if we yeah. stop uh, the politics of uh, uh, of, of division and the politics of uh, discrimination, which many mm -hmm. uh, have gone through. All right. Yes. All right. Rabu, <laughs> Richard Nyonka, Haman Wanyora, and uh, Steve Ogola, thank you so much for making time. Uh, an advocate of the High Court. Mm -hmm. My name is Sam Gitoku. Up next is uh, Willis Raburu with his 20 seconds several times on loop. They'll be here to talk about the action over the weekend and so much more on Sporty Monday. See you again tomorrow as we bring you. Uh, what is of concern, especially for the young learners, stay tuned for that conversation. Bye for now.